Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome back to Legends of Chess 2020 day 4 and I would like to show you one of the games and uh, Peter Fiddler, again Peter Fiddler, it seems like, you know, I, I show only the Peter Fiddler's game, however, they are very, very interesting and um, entertaining, so uh, Peter Fiddler, he's 44 years old, so retired already, however, he's very active commentator on chess24.com platform and I really love his um, analysis and his comments, all his stories. Uh, his rapid ranking at 2742 and in this game he's gonna play as white. And his opponent, Ding Liren, number 3 in the world, Chinese uh, Grandmaster, his rapid ranking 2836. Um, he's number 3 not only in the rapid time control but also in the, in the classical time control. And of course he's gonna play as black and Ding Liren is 27 years old. Uh, and now what just happened uh, in this tournament? Peter Fiedler won his first three matches. So uh, he started this round, fourth round, with the complete of points. All the points, you know, nine points, because there are three points for, for the win. And Ding Liren got zero points. He lost all three matches. So something was wrong and... Uh, in the first three days with Ding Liren uh, and also in the day four he lost to Peter Fiedler first game uh, and then he won and then we had the draw and this is the game number four very exciting so if Ding, Ding Liren wants to you know get at least his first points and then he has to win uh, this game and of course Peter Fiedler if he still wants to uh, lead in the tournament, he also should win. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, we have d4 by Ding Liren, d5, uh, c4 and c6. Slav defense um, and Ding Liren is well-known expert of the Slav defense. Usually he plays that as, uh, as black. However, of course, as white, he also knows how to play. Knight on f3, knight on f6, knight on c2. Uh, and now D takes on C4. A4 by Ding Liren. And this position was reached during the candidates tournament played this year. Uh, to get the qualification for the, you know, challenge Magnus Carlsen in the, in the world champion uh, title match. Uh, and in this game against Fabiano Caruana, Fabiano played bishop on f5. And after knight on e5, one of the sharpest variations were, were included here. Uh, e6, f3, uh, with the idea of bringing the, the king to f2. So I would like just to show you a couple of moves. Bishop on b4, uh, knight on c4, and then after castle... Uh, King f2, Fabiano Caruana play incredible e5. And that was exactly his home preparation. He sacrificed this pawn um, and after knight on e5, he played bishop on c2. So uh, the, the game is just insane. The game is just insane. Then um, Fabiano Caruana uh, in couple of moves gonna sacrifice yet another pawn and being two pawns down he had a tremendous initiative and the game was very very sharp um, and Ding Liren actually managed to consolidate this position and it was pretty exciting if you haven't seen that um, that game yet definitely is worth watching so check over there I commented of that game and one of the best game uh, in the candidates tournament. However, here Peter Fiedler goes for e6. So he wants to keep this bishop um, on the queen side. Uh, and now we have e3, we have c5 uh, and now bishop on c4. Knight on c6, all of that is the well-known theory. We have castle. Uh, C takes on D4 and now uh, Knight takes on D4 is possible. However, uh, Ding Liren prefers to play with the isolated Queen's pawn. Uh, e takes on D4, Bishop on E7 preparing to castle and now Queen on E2. Uh, we have castle, Rook on D1. Um, placing the rook behind the, the isolated queen's pawn and now knight on d5 blocking this pawn uh, we have bishop on b3 knight c on b4 pretty aggressive but it's still the theory so very well known theory knight on e5 and now bishop on d7 so this bishop has to be somehow developed it's uh, it's quite problematic bishop but uh, of course it was played plenty of times uh, we have queen on g4 and this game starts to be sharp here uh, 
and uh, after knight on f6, queen on g3, this position was reached a couple of times and we were lucky enough that Rastam Kasim Janov uh, was one of the commentators in the studio because he played that um, and he knew the theory very very well. So I will just show you the, the Rastam Kasim Janov the game where his opponent played bishop on c6 um, and the point is bishop on h6. So uh, this is the idea of this queen on g4, queen g3 and then, then bishop on h6 threat and then knight can jump to e8 defend g7 uh, and after rook a on c1 king on h8 was played uh, and after knight on c6 b takes on c6 the bishop just simply retreat to to f4 uh, and Rastam won that game, however, uh, only because he outplayed his opponent. Uh, his opponent was just, you know, 300 points um, lower in the ranking, so uh, Rastam didn't have um, any problems to, to outplay him. Uh, but we had also different idea. So moving this bishop not to c6, but very interestingly, uh, bishop on e8. Uh, it's different idea, the bishop cannot be attacked and also the knight cannot come to, to e8. So that is pretty interesting. Uh, however, Dmitry Yakovenko won against Pentala Hare Krishna in, the, uh, in playing, you know, bishop on e8. So that was also pretty interesting because after bishop on h6, uh, he played knight on h5, uh, queen on h3 and then f6, kicking the knight. Uh, but Pentala didn't move the knight, as you see, uh, bishop is hanging, the knight is hanging, uh, he played queen on e6 first and after king on h8, uh, bishop e3, we had f takes on e5, so this was the actually um, the peace sacrifice and after d takes on e5, white has a very ni nice initiative, however black uh, managed to consolidate and win that game. So as you see, the position is a, is a pretty complex, rich in ideas and very very sharp. And we had a lot of games in the history where white won that game and black won that game and not many draws, very sharp position. Uh, here Peter Svidler went for king on h8, so he didn't move the bishop um, and here Ding Liren immediately played d5. Uh, we have e takes on d5, uh, bishop takes on d5, knight b on d5 and knight on d5. And look at this, uh, Ding Liren doesn't have the, the isolated queen spot anymore and also this this rook, uh, you know, x-ray the, the knight and the bishop and watching at the queen. So black has to be extremely uh, careful. For now, Peter Svidler play bishop on e6, attacking the knight twice. And look at this, this knight cannot just, you know, for example, go to, to f6 because there is a checkmate on the first rank. So that is the, that is the real problem. What white could play is knight on c3. Uh, just moving back and, uh, and you know, uh, defend the rook. However, you know, this is moved back. So the position would not be sharp anymore. Uh, but Ding Liren wants to win that game and he played bishop on h6. Bishop on h6. What is important, he connected the rook. So now the rooks are connected uh, and the queen cannot checkmate on d1. Uh, and also what to play now as, as black. G takes on h6 is not possible. This is actually a quite ba bad move because knight on f6 uh, and as you see the, the queen is under attack. Uh, so bishop on f6 for example, rook on d8 uh, and after rook a on d8. Black can play that with the pair of bishop and pair of rooks against the queen uh, and the knight and the, and the rook. But of course white uh, has an advantage here and much easier game game. Uh, queen on a5, uh, that could be also played, however after queen on f4, uh, there are a lot of ideas here, mating ideas as well, so for example rook a on d8, queen on h6, uh, rook on d1, rook on d1 uh, and bishop on f5 defending uh, h7. But that would be also extremely sharp. So, for example, knight e on d7, rook on d8, and black has to be really careful here. And uh, white can, you know, make this attack uh, quite easily. First, just play something like h4, maybe g4, um, or or simply h3, making a space for the for the for the king, and then bring the bring the rook, for example, rook on d5, with the attack on the on the queen, and then continue um, on the king side. 
very dangerous positions. Definitely, uh, you know, taking the bishop at this moment is not possible. So Peter Fiedler knew that and played knight to h5, uh, attacking the queen and also defending g7. Uh, we have queen on f3 and this is the critical moment of the game. How to continue as black? How to continue as black? Very interesting, but in this position g takes on h6 is actually the best move in the position. Uh, because after knight on f4 with the attack on the queen, queen can move to b6 and after knight on h5, queen on b2. So this queen can stay on this diagonal, the longest diagonal, very important, uh, because king is on h8 and it's uh, pretty vulnerable. Uh, black has pair of bishops, uh, however the position of the king is not really safe. Uh, uh, but that's the best what, what black in this position could get. Uh, also, what was possible is bishop on f6 and uh, later in the next move play g takes on h6. That was also possible. Uh, for example, queen on h5 and I would like to show you what doesn't work. So, for example, bishop on e5 doesn't work because after queen on e5, uh, this pawn cannot be moved because the bishop is hanging, uh, so probably rook on g8, defending g7 from the checkmate, but then bishop on g5 and white actually end up uh, with the extra knight, so definitely it's, it's, it's winning. So that's not possible. Bishop on d5 would be slightly better, but still, rook on d8, uh, queen on d8. Uh, and now knight on g6, so winning the, the queen, but of course h takes on g6, queen on d6 and uh, g takes on h6 and black would have to play with the with the rook and the bishop against the queen. So that's the, you know, matter of choice, at least the, the pawn structure is more solid and black can try to, you know, set up some, some kind of fortress maybe um, and continue the game. However, uh, White, of course, uh, has a much better position here. Uh, and as I said, g takes on h6 was also possible here because after knight on f6, uh, queen can move to f6. Uh, and after knight on d7, uh, making this fork, uh, black would be actually forced to, to take the knight exchange the bishop and after queen on b2, rook a on d1, the game can continue. Material is uh, in favor of black, but definitely white has much easier game. This pawn structure is just shattered. Uh, and also white has, you know, a huge, tremendous advantage in the development. The rooks already are doubled on the on the D file, then can be also doubled on the seven rank. Uh, and black has a very difficult game, however, has one extra pawn on the queen side. So uh, that's the position. The only move here is G takes on H6 or playing, uh, you know, bishop on F6 and then G takes on H6. That was possible. However, here, Peter Fiedler went for bishop on g5 and this is actually a losing move so feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white. There is only one winning continuation while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the move we are looking for is knight on f4, knight on f4, this is the only discover attack on the queen which makes sense. Uh, uh, and the queen of course have to be moved, so queen on f6, still keeping an eye around, uh, and then bishop on g5, uh, and after queen on e5, this was what uh, Peter Fiedler played, he could go for a queen on g5, but after knight on e6, f takes on e6, knight f7, uh, white would get the uh, extra exchange, so uh, that's definitely much easier uh, game for, for white, so this is why we have queen on e5 by Peter Fiedler, and now queen on h5, and here h6, h6, so that was plan of Peter Fiedler, attack the bishop, and bishop is defender of the knight. So uh, if bishop is moved, uh, for example, bishop on e7, the plan was queen on f4, and after bishop on f8, try to create some kind of fortress uh, with the bishop on the light square, uh, maybe playing some g6, h5, and continue the game. Of course, uh, white stands better, but that was the, the only chance actually uh, for black. 
Uh, also, bishop on h6 was possible. Uh, and after queen on h5, bishop on g7 with check, and knight h5, uh, white would have, you know, two extra pawns. So this continuation would also be okay. However, Ding Liren um, choose the, the third one and played h4, defending the bishop uh, and also this pawn is pinned. So uh, Peter Svidler first unpin. So this is the threat again and of course if bishop is moved then uh, the knight gonna fall. Uh, but Ding Liren play rook on e1 kicking the the queen queen on f5 still keeping an eye on the on the knight so if bishop is moved uh then at least uh peter Svidler can play you know being down the exchange uh, and after g4 peter Svidler resign so uh ding liren got his first three points and uh, peter Svidler is not leader anymore and why did he resign? Uh, because after queen on g4, queen on g4, bishop on g4, the bishop can just move to e7 uh, and then just, you know, uh, being up the knight. It's, of course, enough to win the game uh, on the top level. Uh, and also, if black tries something else, like bishop on c5 to get under control e7 and trap the bishop, it doesn't work because rook a on c1, kick the, kick the queen, uh, queen on b4, and now knight on e6 making a space for the bishop so after f takes on e6 the bishop can move to e3 or uh, the bishop also can take on h6 and it, this is even stronger because uh, that's decisive mating attack with the rook on e6 uh, with the queen on h6 or or here on, on g6 that's just you know um, that, that's just mating attack so this is why after g4 Peter Svidler resigned and I would like to show you the standing so here we go Magnus Carlsen won again he won his fourth match so 12 points Jan Nepomniaci 11 points he also won three matches but one of them were Armageddon so that's why he has 11 points Peter Svidler uh, nine points uh, he just as you see lost the match today against Ding Liren then we have Vladimir Kramnik seven points Boris Gelfand six points Anish Giri five points Vasil Ivanchuk four points and Ding Liren got his first three points Peter Leko, again, quite unlucky. He has two points. Uh, and Vichy Anand, Vichy Anand uh, had his chance actually to, to win first match today. However, uh, probably he is not used to play the tournaments online and he get the really uh, beautiful position. He plays a really strong chess. However, um, he had the zero points. Now he lost his fourth match uh, but this time in Armageddon this is why he has one point so that's the standings and if you like this video press like if you don't like for some reason press unlike and if you don't want to miss any other videos from this tournament press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one